This is Devin with Writing Daily, the show that talks about writing for writers, about writing, how we get our stuff done, how we keep putting it out there, how we lead and live the writer's life. Uh, my name is Devin Galladay. Uh, I am the editor-in-chief of In the No Traveler. I'm also the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, the author of the forthcoming memoir, 10,000 Miles with My Dead Father's Ashes. Always, if you like what I'm doing, uh, what we are doing here, please consider hitting the like button and do it often. Feel free to share and post your comments, whether you're watching us on YouTube, live on Facebook, or... Uh, and always feel free to subscribe and rate us on iTunes. We're on a whole bunch of different channels, which is a great thing. Uh, I'm also, uh, I have an MFA, a master's in fine arts. The reason why I'm bringing that up is because I'm actually having a guest on today, Barry Gabay, who is the author of 16 books. And uh, we went to school together. So we happened to run into each other at uh, the LA Times Book Fair at USC. And so uh, we've been meaning to do this. We're finally getting around to it. Uh, Barry, how are you, man? What's going on? I am doing superb. I'm I uh, writing, as you know, as I know you're doing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Staying alive, keeping the blood flowing through my veins with these words on pages and after page after page. Yeah, that is what we do. For those who are not familiar with Barry's work, let me start by saying uh, Barry Gabay is a storyteller and the creator of Eubenism Theory uh, and Wondrous Fiction. He's going to tell us, I, I'm hoping, a little bit about both of those things. Uh, he has completed 16 books thus far, all compilations of short wondrous tales and sketches. His favorite authors are Hemingway, Kerouac, Salinger, Bellow, uh, Lardner, Roth, Trevor, Shakespeare, and Stevenson. He sees himself as a literary figure in the world and hopes to imprint his love of forewriting upon the surface of artists and scientists alike. That is a tall order, Barry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> welcome welcome i'm so glad that you are here uh okay so let's just start with uh eubenism theory theory yeah. i don't know if let's i dive right into it correctly or pronounce that correctly yeah uh, can, you, can you tell me what what that is what does that mean for you and what is yeah, uh, I, wrote, I wrote the dissertation in antioch in fact i oh, was wow. right i was writing uh my first book bonkers and uh <laughs> to tell the truth my my some way in the in the middle of writing that book, my eyes started to, um, they start to boggle. They started to act funny. And I was looking at words differently on, as I was writing them out. And then I thought, Hey, if I take these letters, um, that are within a word and I rearrange, it was like, it was like beautiful mind almost, you know? Um, and if I rearrange them, uh, you, uh, every word, so every, eubenism, comes from an acronym E W B A U B A, which stands for every word begets another. Thus, I segue uh, into if you rearrange the letters of some of these words, you can create other words, and it can uh, propel you forward into a new thought, a new world, a new through new uh, through doors into a new realm. So, um, using that theory, that humanism theory, where every word begets another word. And with that other word, you can string your thought into a, into this creative unknown world. Um, I wrote the second book, uh, The Poet's Middle Finger. So that whole the whole that whole book, the second book, was based on that that law, that that theory that every word, if you start with all you need is one word, and if you believe that every word begets enough, can spawn another few words and string the meanings and the thorough line, you can create this, this, uh, this whole different type of writing, really. It's, it's very imaginative and you're in the thick of imagination. So, um, yeah, and, and humanism is not, it, it's important to note that it's not where, um, it's not like my Plymouth Rock, it's not where I've actually landed. It, wondrous fiction is, I believe is where I is the destination. So humanism theory was like the boat that I sailed on to get to wondrous fiction, this land 
this this provenance called wondrous fiction um and uh the, the, i believe th this is where i'm staying it's it's it, humanism has brought me here and so um, can you can you say a little bit more about wondrous fiction what is that right. is i mean because I immediately, when you say something like wondrous fiction, I kind of go into a magical realism sensibility. Right, right. right. Uh, I, I mean, is, it, is that kind of where we're headed? Right, we're headed fiction? towards that magical realism, that Gabriel Garcia stuff. And uh, um, the, there is real, realistic um, uh, elements within wondrous fiction. But, but what, what wondrous fiction does is, You've got it, but it's hard to explain because you've got to take that that trail that I took through humanism theory in order to get to one, to understand and to get wondrous fiction. Uh, it's a topsy turvy type of storytelling where um, a lot and anything can happen, and the voice is embraced. The the the, the literary voice is embraced one hundred percent. It can start as a conventional beginning within a story you know you've got a married husband you got, you got you got a husband a wife they're married they have children they're happy they're living happily and then one day uh, and then one day like something goes wrong you know and that something is not going to be your conventional something goes wrong it will really twist so for example in one of my stories the spider one of the very first stories that i wrote uh that has wondrous elements in it it, it it's about like this married couple and uh, the husband finds like this creature in the street one day, you know, like you got to think twilight zone a little bit, you know, he, mm. he, he, no one's really taken notice of this and it's a spider. It's like a, and it's not, a, he knows it's not a tarantula because tarantulas are hairy and he's not a spider specialist either. So he doesn't know exactly what it is, but it's crawling and it's creeping, creepeth and crawleth <laughs> through the streets. And um, he decides to bring it home, take it to the wife and kids, show it to the children and so, and so we're starting to like derail a little bit because already we don't know what this creature is and, and where it's from and, and how it got and why no one else notices it but, but, this, but this one man. And uh, he brings home the, the kids are, are over the moon about it. Oh my God, this is so cool. Look, look, this thing's crazy and it crawls and it creeps. And so already we've, we're in the wondrous world, but we go deeper into the wondrous world. And, the, and what happens is that the, the kids are so enthralled with this creature is that, uh, that, that the dad decides to allow the creature to do some babysitting for him. So already we're, we're really off the rails. You we, know? we are off the rails. So right. Can, can I ask, uh, so, so these kind of humanism and, and the wondrous fiction, those are right. the elements that drive you into to writing? Because writing six, no. 16 books is... It's you know, I, very, very good, Devin. Now you, you're starting to use upstairs. It's because we we use whatever drives us, right? I mm -hmm. mean, if, if it's the fuel that we have, that, I'm, I'm happy you mentioned this. This is a very interesting topic to discuss, too, because, you know, um, certain movies drive certain actors to do them. Certain, you know, characters, certain roles and characters drive certain performers to perform those parts or singers, certain music allows certain singers like opera for example i'm not some certain singers are not going to sing anything but opera and that's what drives them um but wondrous fiction is 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 like a um it's a created genre it's not you know it's not like opera it's not like something that's out there it's not something it's very twilight zone it's, it's, you know, it, and it can be comedic too a lot of times mm. uh you could find yourself la most more often than not you you're, you will find yourself laughing at the absurdity at the outrageousness but and that's what i want that's the effect i want the reader to have is to laugh at the absurdity and outrageousness but I, i've got to keep my straight like a comedian who says a joke and keeps this serious you know mm. and that's how the the audience uh uh prowl more into more you know more exerted laughter and, and the revelry continues i've got to keep myself serious if i break my character and start laughing with the audience they're gonna say no he's not a, such a great comedian anymore you know mm. um that it's it's, it's all part of the, the theory too so it's so it drives you and it's kind of your own unique special genre absolutely 
Uh, but it's great. So when did you discover that you had a passion and a love for writing? Obviously, we went to school together, so yeah. it's been a it's been a number of years. But yeah. so when when was the, when was the thing? When was the thing that happened that well, that was like okay, this is what I need to be doing? Right. So um, I was younger. I was living in a townhouse with my with my folks, and uh, I, I found fascination in like greeting cards. You know, like the 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 the, uh, the fundamental book, I call it, because it's like one page. You open a greeting card; it says something in there. It's a sentence long. You close it; it's done. So I found fascination in the, like, and I was, and I remember creating a lot of greeting cards, or trying to like put page and page together and staple them in the middle to create like a two-page book. You know, uh, something something simple, and I'd write like once there was a chicken, and I flip the page, and the chicken crossed the road, whatever. Um, so I started I, I started creating like these cards, and then these like two page pamphlets when I was very young, and I can say I was like nine or something then, and I wasn't gung ho over it. I, I went off I went off into this world where I wanted to skateboard when I was a teenager. I wanted to play basketball. I was very sportful. I wanted to engage in hiking activities and, and I wanted to prove my strength to the world. And then that went off um, into into a, a hunger for, for learning medicine. So, I, so when, by the time I'm 20, 20, 19, 20, 21, I had no clue I'd be writing stories. I, I mean, I was I was out there studying, you know, physics, organic chemistry, um, bio biochemistry, all that stuff, and I was doing rather well with well in those classes. But then, at one point, my mind kind of crumbled and said, "I can't do this anymore. This is I'm I'm putting on a mask and going to school, oh, I'm, or I'm trying to prove myself to someone, you know." And um, and I and I dropped out of the school I was going to and returned and said, hey, I'll try English. Uh, after about a four, four year, five year adventure through the wild, I had my own little uh, trip, as you can call it, and uh, which I've delineated a little bit in bonkers, my first book. And then um, after that, I went to CSUN. So I said, when I said, hey, I'll just study English, I, I went to CSUN and I fell, I, I mean, the first like class I took was like, mid 20th century lit i read hemingway i read sound and i just gorge just gorge just gorge just loved it voraciously read the pages you know and and i thought that's what i want to be i want to be like a a figure you know like one of these people i want to be one of these uh bellows one of these stevensons one of these shakespeare's i mean shakespeare's a god in my mind shakespeare is god mm. you know he's he's he has a lot down Pat in, 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 in his books uh, and in the sweet like scenes I was I was very involved in like the sweetness of the scene you know I mean I I'm just a, I mean if you want to like break me down to my finer um, atoms I'm just a person that loves a sweet scene do you know what I mean like whether it's no, of scene, course well I mean I think like, I think good storytelling is all about its emotionality. I mean, I think, I think we all strive to write characters and circumstances uh, and, and tales that are going to emotionally affect the reader. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, Absolutely. I think, I think we're here to create stories and characters that are going to be memorable. And I'm talking about, you know, I'm describing it in a way in, in terms of fiction, obviously in nonfiction, we just want to present sort of like, uh, you know, the characters and circumstances of truth that are going to resonate most deeply. Uh, and you focus primarily, your, your, your chief genre is fiction, correct? Yeah, I do fiction. I do only fiction, yeah. Good, good. Um, so, how does your writing day start? I mean, do you write every day? Do you have like a, okay, I'm writing a book today, or are you just constantly writing? Um, I'm, I write, I wish I could constantly write. I wish I could pull up Picasso, you know, I saw like the, um, the, the, the preview of it, his new, the new show, the Picasso, and he, there's like this scene uh, where he's like, you write in the morning, you write at night, you write every day. And you're, uh, actually, he's not a writer, he's a yeah. painter. But he's like, I paint every day, paint all night, morning, night, he can't stop. 
And I wish I could do that. <laughs> you know, I really do. I wish I could write all day, all night. I can't, though. So I do write every day. That's true. Except for Saturday and Sunday. I take, I take the weekends off. I journal. I do journal on those weekends. Um, uh, I, I, I journal every day. I could, if, there, if, there's any, if, if there's one thing I do every single day, including weekends, it's journaling. But uh, as far as like the publishable material goes, I just um, do the, the Monday through Friday. And, and what does that look like? Um, what do you mean? What does that look like? Uh, in other words, uh, do you have a certain time of day? Do you where you you know Monday through Friday? Uh, you know, do you have to have your special mug? You know, filled with yeah. coffee. How does that? Do you know what I mean? Like, what yeah. what does that look like? Well, it used to look really ugly, um, but but now it's it's more tamed. I mean, it used to be more scattered and disorganized. And I I, I mean, I don't know if I can say this, but uh, being candid with you, I used to I used to smoke a lot, and I used to, that would wake me up in the morning, and I just get to the computer and work. But I've quit that. I've quit that. It's been like six months. Thank goodness. Uh, that that was driving me mad because it it's a it's a picker upper and a booster and it will take your life at the same time so i'm not i'm not supporting that anymore but um i it was so what i want to say is it's getting more organized where before 12 o'clock i have to be seated i have to be um at least get, have given uh, uh, two hours into the process at least two hours and uh if if not then i sometimes I just sit and stare at the screen and when I when I find myself sit, sitting and staring at the screen at, in a writer's block fit, I will like, I will lose it. I will I, I can like just smash, you know, shut my computer and walk out the house. And my girlfriend would ask, you know, why are what's wrong? Why are you why are you what's 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 fulminated within you? And I and I just I got to hold it within me. Like for writers, we've got to hold it in we can't really exp oh it's because i can't write it sounds too babyish to be like i can't get my the, the sentence i wrote today sounded like crap it sounds like a a, a child about crying about you know confect at the confectionery store why he can't get the lollipop the color of lollipop he wants so i i tended to hold that in but it's more it's becoming more and more organized i got my mug i got my coffee you know, I sit at my desk. I got a small desk in my room. There's a little window next to it. I like to look out the window every once in a while. I buckle down and like, like Hemingway says, you know, say the truest thing you know. That's how I usually start it. You know, the, the, the truest thing in your mind. And, and the, what hurts the most is when I've got to abandon some of the stories. After 8,000 words, that's like, I feel like I've abandoned a baby or something. You know, I mean, I know it sounds too dramatic and it, it, it's not that at all, but for writers, when we're like 10,000 words deep into a story and then it's like, I got to jump ship. This is not going anywhere. It's like one of my appendages came off, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing being a writer. I mean, there, there is that line about you have to kill your, your darlings uh, because, you know, sometimes things don't, things don't work the way you want them to, or you're not feeling it or something. I mean, I think it's a tricky thing. So, you know, to accomplish all the, the writing that you have, yeah. uh, which I want to ask you about that. Yeah, so sure. uh, you uh, are self-published, correct? Yeah, correct. Is there, was there a certain process or a decision that you came to, to come to that decision? Uh, well, it's not where I want to, uh, it's not my be all end all position uh, i do i do want to get my um i, I do i do want to fall into traditional publishing I, need, I, I believe i need an agent i believe i have what it takes um it's going to be hard though because the, the, the system is not working the way it used to work you know not every, everyone has a free chance to swing at the bat anymore uh, only only those that are I, I think only like celebrities and those who have power in the world of, of television or film have more leverage into getting published and but i'm not giving up and 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 though i know you asked me if um if i'm uh, about the self-publishing world it's not like i said it, I'm, I'm happy with it but it's not like where i want to end it and if it is i mean i'm not the creator of the universe but if it is I, i'm planning to write 35 books i'm planning to to, to, to i'm on number 16 i'm planning and then after 35 um i can like take a break i feel like i've written enough 
you know, like the, the literary gods from the celestial look down and say, hey, he's actually done as much as we've done, you know? And at that point, it doesn't matter if I'm self-published or published or who gives a crap. I can be Emily, an Emily Dickinson character who's completed enough words all stuffed in the drawer of her desk, you know, before she passed away. When they when they open up the desk, hey, look at this! She's got all the pages. It's 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 every word that that you know a literary figure can write. Um, so so if uh, if if it does come down to it, I my ultimate goal is to complete thirty five books. And like I don't at that point, I don't care if it's published, self published, or whatever. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think that's uh, really a, an amazing goal to to uh, to want to have that much literature created. I think yeah. that is uh, good on you. I wish you thank you. Uh, thank you. I wish you incredible success with it. Thank you. Um, so, what would you say? You know, well, first off, uh, I know that I just recently missed you at the last bookstore. Uh, do you have any other events or things like that that are coming up in the near future? And, or if somebody is looking to get in touch with your work, where can they find it and, or get in touch with you if they want? Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't have any events coming up and I, and I don't want to right now. I mean, I have, I have some, some, some doors that were flung open for me, but I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to engage. I think I need to take a little break and I want to write. I mean, after all, writer writes, he doesn't, um, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, so promoting yourself is one thing, but I, I, like I said, like the goal I have is get the work done, get the genius on, on paper and, and all that stuff. But, um, if you want to connect with my work, um, I've got a really lame website. It's www.books, um, by Barry, Barry with an A dot com. Um, I encourage fellows to go to Amazon to order my books. I, I know I'd get more um, kickback from if, if they go, if they went to the publisher, I universe uh, to order, but I'm not, I'm not really um, going to force them into that world. Uh, Amazon. And, and how do you, so, and how do you spell your name? Just uh, uh, so people know. Cause sure, Bar Barry with an A, a B-A-R-R-Y. And then the Gabay part comes from the word gabardine, uh, but it's spelled G-H-A-B-A-E-I. Um, I don't know if it's written here. On, it's written on my screen, but I don't know if it's written here. No, I don't think it's something. Well, maybe, maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be. I don't think it is on the final, final uh, thing, but I'm going to, uh, I'm going to spell it one, once more. That's B as in boy, A-R-R-Y, G-H-A-B-A. E I and so uh, and Barry can be found at booksbyberry.com. Uh, no spaces or anything like that. And then of course all your material is on Amazon.com. Uh, Barry, what a <laughs> fascinating, interesting guy you are. I think. Thank you. Uh, Thank I you. wish you. So you're you're uh, uh, you're closing in on halfway through your quest, and I yeah. think it is. Uh, you know, I think it's wonderful that you have such a deep and passionate love for writing. I think it's, I think storytelling is just, you know, listen, I love it. I'm an, I'm a, an avid reader myself and right. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't have a right. crazy love for myself. Absolutely. So, so thank you for being here. And as always to our audience, uh, please make sure you consider hitting the like button, sharing it, tell your friends. Uh, writing daily is here for you uh, so we can get our stuff done we're looking for inspiration however we can find it to make sure that we get our words out and our stories completed in the way that we want and uh, and get people to find our writings and just one quick thought on agents uh, agents are very very hard to come by but not always sometimes people do get lucky with them but for the most part, you have to have a very uh, you have to have a very strong platform. In other words, uh, uh, fans on Facebook or Twitter, but like lots, like hundreds of thousands, kind of thing. But it's still possible. So you, we just keep striving towards the uh, the agents and the big book publishers. Uh, personally, I, I managed a, a smaller book publisher, and I am. I'm blessed with that. So anyway, that's what I've got for today. Uh, Barry, again, thank you so much for being here. 
and uh, and we're going to talk about more writing daily in the very near future. Uh, and I'm going to start doing my audible book narration tomorrow. So I'll probably be offline for the next couple of days, but I will look forward to speaking to you all real soon. Take care.